Hey, what's up? And welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 5, Episode 13. Today we're talking about Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College, from 1990, directed by John Carl Beekler. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. There's a party going on, Dumpster Dwellers. Welcome to it. Gonna say they're all invited, Joe. They're all invited. Uh, There's a party going on. Uh, apparently, not only in the video dungeon, but at the Beta Zeta frat house. It's a hundred percent true. Uh, and <laughs> they're drinking beers. They're slapping asses. They're eating pizza. They're folding up a whole fucking pizza and eating uh, but, it. But Joe, just just one can. Joe, I just take one. Yeah, just one. That Dom DeLuise motherfucking <laughs> ghoulie cat, man. So ghoulies, right? So yeah. so okay. Like, I, I think we've only done Ghoulies 2, and that was a watch-along we did for Patreon, yes. which you can go get now on uh, patreon.com slash movie dump, so you can watch that replay yeah. of Ghoulies 2. Five the, and $10 tiers. The uncut version, by the way. Yes. Given to us by uh, our awesome friend Chris Barr before it was released by Umbrella Entertainment. Chris got the hookups. Oh, yes, he does. Um, but not only did we do Ghoulies 2, but we just did Movie Dumpster Presents... Magic, Mayhem, and Little Rubber Monsters at the Colonial Theater. Yes. Uh, we showed Ghoulies on 35mm and The Gate on 35mm, which was fucking incredible. We didn't really talk too much about that yet. No, this is actually kind of like the first time since uh, since that event. Uh, again, I, we, I, we kind of talked about this very briefly in our Prey review we put out before this. Yeah. I'll go check that out, the right review of Prey, uh, the Predator prequel, if you have not. But uh, yeah, this is, you're right. This is the first time we've really talked about this outside of posting a few pictures it's, on uh, Instagram and and the socials. It's the first episode, the first full-fledged mainline episode that we were gonna, that we're doing after yeah. you know, post the show. Now we were, we were going to do Ghoulies 3 and the Gate 2 prior to the live show, but there right. was just so much shit going on. Um, it was nuts. Um, but hey, we're remedying that. Today. Yes, yes. Uh, the, ga- <laughs> the gate two will maybe have to make a return in some other capacity at this point because other plans are now pushing into it. Yes, stay but tuned. Three, Ghoulies three had to happen. Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, it's also not only do we have to do Ghoulies three, but it's a nice little uh, uh push because mm. we're bringing you the Magic Mayhem and Little Rubber Monster show exclusively to Patreon for our five and ten dollar tiers. We are giving it to you in full. Okay, you're going to see the entire show as if you were there. All our fans and friends who couldn't make it that were in different states or had something else going on that day and couldn't make it or or were sick or whatever. You'll be able to watch it from the comfort of your own home and you'll have the drink recipes of the drink, the special drinks, the cocktails that we uh, serve that night. Um, And uh, and you'll get all the little in betweenies, the live stuff that we did, the live. Yeah, stuff we did with Tony from Active Movies and uh, Mr. Lobo from Cinema yeah. Insomnia. Oh, yeah, um, with some other uh, guest guests. There are uh, some uh, other guests, guests up there. Up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tom Scholl, uh, yes. Crystal Quinn, uh, and Jess uh, uh, Hickson, Jessica Hickson, Jess Daydream, whatever you want to yeah. call her. The editor of Hack the Movies, the editor of, of the, the show. Yes, we. So thank you guys so much for helping us out on that. And th- and just you know, an- again, another huge thanks to all of our uh, podcast friends and family, <laughs> our podcast family that came together yeah. and, and helped promote that event, and and all jumped on to sponsor it and stuff. And of course, Cavity Colors and uh, uh, Trick or Treat Studios. Yeah, uh, everybody was super awesome and uh, made the event super special. Um, and now you can watch it. And you'll also will be special links on Patreon. We haven't put them up yet. However, mm. you can get the. Limited edition posters from from Davy DeForn. Davy the Scary Cat DeForn has limited edition posters of Ghoulies and the Gate that we that he did specifically for that event. Right. As of this recording, I mean, the, the further out from the, the time yeah. this is posted, that may no longer be the case. But you know, get them while they're hot. Yeah, they're they're there for the time being. They probably. If you're listening to this fucking show two years from, or a year from now or three months from now, they might be yeah. all gone. So I can't help you. Good there. luck. Yeah. So not only will you be able to get uh, have have a special link in the Patreon for Davies uh, Prince of the Gate and Ghoulies, but you will also have special links exclusive to Patreon to so you can get uh, a movie dumpster, Magic Mayhem and Little Rubber Monsters event shirt and sticker. So they will be there for you to purchase exclusively on Patreon and you'll be able to experience it. Just like if you were there. Yes. And uh, there was a limited run of those also. Yes. Uh, so there are not a ton of those left either. But again, 
Get them while they're hot. We're going to put up what we have yeah. left and have at it. Yep. So, yeah, with that being said, we're going to talk about the third entry in this series. Now, when I say ghoulies to somebody, usually they're like, oh, the the, the monster in the toilet? Or, yeah, most people. Yeah. Most people are like, oh, the monster in the toilet. Or it's usually this one. It's usually Ghoulies 3. Ghoulies 3 is the huh. one that everybody seems to uh, remember or like be like, oh, that fucking movie with the, where they all talk, right? And it's like the Three <laughs> Stooges. <laughs> well, that's a good, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because it's definitely the wackiest entry for sure. Yeah, I don't know. The second one, like, is pretty damn memorable too with the circus uh, theme, but well, it's know, a carnival. The college one took over for some reason. Well, uh, you know what? I think I think it is like I used to watch all of these religiously as a kid, all four of these movies. Um, but I really have grown to appreciate Ghoulie, like the first movie, a lot. Um, just from like a from a low budget like filmmaking point of view, and like it's actually a really well made film. It's well written. It's well. Sh it's it shot really well. It, it's it's a good movie. It's a good B movie for sure. I, I definitely after a few more viewings, uh, one leading into the live show, and then what I got to see of it during our live show. I, I like it more than my initial viewing. I think, uh, you know, go watch that watch along yeah. on Patreon of Ghoulies too to hear what I thought at the time. Yeah. But yeah, I think it, it the effects really are what make it for me. The plot a little less so, but sure. Well, Ghoulies Two is just a fun time. So well, I'm about one, but oh, two oh. two is just the kills are really good too. I'll give it that. And yeah, Phil Fonda Carroll can't go wrong. Phil Fonda there. Carroll, yeah. And you get a giant ghoulie at the end of that movie. Yeah, which you get is... Graham <laughs> Scramps in there. Oh, Royal Nano's yeah. in that movie. The fucking magician gets fucked up. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, the great fucking Fausto. <laughs> yeah. Um. They're all good in their own right. They all do something different. Like two is nothing like one. No. And, right. And three is definitely not like one or two. And four. We'll get to four. OK. okay. But uh, <laughs> three is like they just like stuck it in, you know, the ghoulies movies in a blender with like porkies. Well, or animal house. Well, yeah, we were we were talking about this. Um, But one and two, I, I used to watch all the time mm -hmm. as a kid with my cousin, uh, Alan. We used to rent them specifically two but three was a big one in high school for me and that's one where we would fucking you know suck down a fucking j boy and then you're fucking chilling with the ghoulies to go to college drinking beers and shit and farting and fucking slapping chicks asses uh, and shit yeah okay, okay yeah um it's like this weird amalgam like john carl beekler was like by this point he's like fuck it i'm gonna do whatever i want and what's funny about this one is it's a Vestron joint, but... Yeah, I saw that. It's a Vestron joint. It's an Empire joint, I'm pretty sure. I mean, Ghoulies is an Empire joint, put it that way. Like oh, no. A franchise. It was, I think it was a Lightning Pictures yeah, I, I, joint. When I looked at it, they, it was same. a Vestron. was the only one I think that was owned it at the time. It was It was one of those things where it was like Lightning Pictures, yeah. but Vestron put it out. It's all the Charlie Band yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. However, exactly. he's not... He has no involvement in this movie. Right, I saw that. Be Beekler just took over and was like, you know, that weird shit I had in Troll. Well, yeah. forget the plant life, but it's all here otherwise. Because <laughs> he's just having a good time. Uh, the Be Beekler's like hit. Talk about that joint you were just talking about hitting in high school. Beekler was hitting, you know, some of those cannons for Predator 2 when he was making this oh, fucking yeah. film. Want some ganja money. Uh, and then just, there's some odd decisions in this movie that are just like, even for Beekler, I'm like, far out, man. And then Ghoulies 3 was born. You know, yeah, exactly. It's just this weird weird uh, amalgamation of things like you were saying before it's like porkies meets revenge of the nerds meets yeah. the three stooges uh, e on the set of animal house it's like what the fuck it's weird it it's, is just a very weird movie it's totally batshit insane there's little rubber monsters in it that fucking talk and crack jokes and fucking kill people and drink beer i mean it's quintessential uh little rubber monster movie for yes. sure um, uh, and, and of course, it's, it includes circus music. Just to, <laughs> just, just to put right all over that, the cherry on top of the circus music. Sure. You know, you say circus music and and, and um, Michael Lloyd and Reg Powell did the music for this. I didn't look up what else they did, but I love it, man. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Willies, the, the Michael Ray Bowers Let's go back to the Willies when I complain about circus music. Uh, well, not, not necessarily, but this one specifically I could see sounds I could like see it. it. And I really like the the intro thing where it's like ding, 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 ding. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't mind that. But then there was like a scene later where like this dude's fucking his girlfriend and it's just like <laughs> do, 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 do. it's like, oh my god, like the hug a bunch or something. Uh, man. I don't know, do we Brown's have... daycare. We <laughs> got you right in my crosshairs. Yeah, yeah. There's a 
There's a couple of like licensed songs for this that I fucking love. There's a party going on. There's a party going on. Yeah, no, that's good. That's, that's a good, good one. And some like it hot. Some like it hot. Some like to dance. Yeah, and some well, like to dance, baby. Yeah. So, well, Veronica likes it. We'll get to that. Ronnie. Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she likes to. She likes to use the equipment, Joe. Uh, she, she can use. She can use a, <laughs> uh, my equipment. Uh, but <laughs> so this movie, so Ghoulies is on DVD. Ghoulies three is on DVD, and okay. it's on Blu-ray. But huh. it's it's a German digi book, right? What the hell is a digi book? It's like uh, um, uh, they're all my DVDs are upstairs and Blu-rays. But it's like a it's like a um, a a, a paper. It's like a hardcover book that has like plastic and you open it and it's like a it's like a ju- it's like a snap case, but it's oh. it's like a it's a style of case. It's a fucking digi book. OK, OK. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really explain it too well. Sure. I guess I guess that about wraps it okay, up. Yeah, okay. like 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 uh, you ever get like cassette tapes in the 90s where yeah. it was like an anthology or something and they were in those plastic. Oh. Uh, it was like a book. And yeah, you'd open yeah, it up. Yeah. It, they're like that. OK, OK. Um, And it's only in Germany. Hmm. And on Blu-ray. And I don't even know, it, like, it's on Blu-ray, but I don't know if it's, like, a full frame or it's a widescreen release. I don't have it, so I don't know. Right, right. Um, But it has not gotten a U.S. Blu-ray yet. And I don't know if it ever will, because, uh, like I said, was saying in the beginning, Umbrella just put out a beautiful, beautiful Blu-ray of uh, Ghoulies 1 and 2. Mm. Um, And I think uh, uh, Unflush, the Ghoulies podcast, did... Uh, a commentary or like some kind of behind the scenes stuff, which is fucking amazing. Uh, that's so cool that they got to do that. Um, but it's also the TV cut of Ghoulies or like huh. all this extra footage that was like, it's like this super cut or something like that or like extra features uh, thereof. And I believe it's also the uh, the uncut version of Ghoulies 2, which is only available on a German Blu-ray. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Germany loves Ghoulies, I guess. Well, it's just weird how that stuff works out. You know, like, mm-hmm. why is this uncut and blah, blah, blah. I, I think it just has to do with Ghoulies 2, the marketing of Ghoulies 2 and not to be rated R, but to be rated PG-13 okay. and to be shown on TV and be able to be shown on TV and all that kind of stuff. Um, but Ghoulies 3 was actually intended for a fucking theatrical release. Can you believe that? I I mean, the puppets are really good, so uh, maybe, the, but uh, there is not enough uh, kills in this movie to, for this to have been theatrical in any way, shape, or form. It's not a horror. Not that that makes a movie, but... It's not a horror movie. It's way more of a comedy. It's a comedy horror, if you even want to call it that. Um, it, It's like a bonkers fucking fever dream. Like, two is very much... Like, there's... Two, dark, is, two is a horror movie. There's dark humor, but like it's a horror movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there, there are like stock sequences and there's horror sequences and people are supposed to be scared and all that kind of stuff. And Ghoulies uh, is 100% a horror movie. This is more in vein of like kind of like a Critters 2, but, but granted I would say Critters 2 is even way more of a comedy than this, but it's it, it's more of that style of horror where the horror is kind of the window dressing. I think Critters 2 is more of a horror movie than Ghoulies 3. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not even a good yeah. comparison. I can't think yeah. of anything really that close, but Little Rubber Monsters horror comedy. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's this oddball fucking yeah. thing because it's not necessarily a horror a little rubber monster horror movie, but it's a little rubber monster horror movie comedy. Right, because even like the kills that are in the film are almost reminiscent of like, honestly, like a My Demon Lover kind of style of comedy. Yeah. With, you know, you know, some facial shit that happens (laughs) and people getting squished in the toilet. So it's all slapstick. You gotta gotta laugh at it. It's all slapstick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, When everybody dies, it's a a joke. Um, And and again, those ghoulies are three stooging it up. Oh, I love it, dude. I mean, again... the creatures come out of the fucking toilet, All Joe. Right. They know what they're making. <laughs> Beekler knows what he's got, you know, going on here. All right, so let's let's get into this. Do you want to plot crunch this one? Sure. Uh, so twenty one years ago, apparently, yes. Uh, this Andy Dick lookalike finds this fucking ghoulish tales magazine or comic book. It's I fucking say. Terry from the gate, dude. He's still fucking around with demons. <laughs> Okay, yeah. yeah it's canonical. It's the MDU, man. Yeah, okay. I like that. Mm-hmm. He turned that fucking Sacrifix album backwards. Yeah, and, well, uh, well, he found the ghoulish tales is what right. happened. Well, he read that backwards. Yes. He thought it was <laughs> Japanese originally. <laughs> anyway, he's he's trying to read this incantation, uh, and the ghoulies are attacking him, and basically they get sucked into the toilet. Whatever. 20 years pass, or 21 years, excuse me. And now we're at this college frat where now there's it's prank week. It's prank week, baby. Uh, and these kids go crazy with the pranks, which we'll get into. 
And uh, they have this professor played by Kevin McCarthy, who is always a hard ass in every movie, and especially in this one, he is. Professor Ragnar. Oh, man, he's a character. He's great. And then basically, long story short, the ghoulies get released through some shenanigans between this frat uh, and this other frat that are kind of battling, and Kevin McCarthy, who who's trying to take them out, and then the ghoulies just basically become frat boys and are drunk and like casually killing people. <laughs> While, while laughing about it, and then uh, it kind of all comes to a head as like our main uh, protagonist tries to figure out what the fuck's going on. Yeah, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. And when I say shenanigans, I know I do bust that word out somewhat occasionally, but it's like this is a movie where that word is, is <laughs> it basically covers the whole film. Like this could have been Ghoulies Three shenanigans. If you look up shenanigans in the dictionary, Ghoulies th it's Ghoulies Three is cited. Yes, yeah, the fucking picture yeah. is the cat glue with the beer in the hand. <laughs> So yeah, we like Sean was saying, we open up uh, on this fraternity house, and the and the Ghoulies logo comes in, and that yeah. fucking circus music that you love so much. <laughs> I love it. Um, but but yeah, this this fucking Terry lookalike is like, or or you know, what he looks like he looks like uh, Eddie from the It TV series. Oh yeah, a little kinda. bit. Yeah, any yeah. one of those three. Yeah, let it look, take your pick in the MDU. He's in the middle of like trying to send the Ghoulies back, yeah. right? And I love how Beekler just goes full in on the fucking toilet thing. <laughs> like, this ghoulies toilet. Like, they are summoned via toilet. Yeah. Okay? The first movie, they're, they're, there's like a pentagram. It's like all this right. very serious black magic uh, 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 seance kind of thing or, or ritual kind right, of we thing. Get, we get the one second and they use it on the damn cover where he comes out of the toilet he's, in the first one. Even, not even. He's not even wearing suspenders no, or anything. No, but, but it's a fish ghoulie, right? Right, right. Or in, in Ghoulies 2, they're already summoned, and right. there's like cultists in the beginning, and there's like a preacher like going trying to dispose of them, right? Mm -hmm. And we get a toilet scene at the very end, right? Yeah, of well, the right. movie, you gotta get the cover shot, sure. But this one is specifically like, yeah, the fucking Ghoulies like are summoned through this toilet. It's like a portal, right? It's yeah. one of fucking John Hurt's portals. This fucking <laughs> toilet, it's running on buke uh, energy. <laughs> oh, it's buke energy. Oh yeah, that residual buke energy. Oh my dude. god, you're taking a shit on that <laughs> thing, and he forgets to turn it off. You just get sucked out into space. Uh, but yeah, they, he basically reads his incantation out of this like. It's cool as Tales. It's def definitely like an EC Comics or a Tales from the Crypt kind of style magazine. Oh, and it's it's heavily influenced by that too. And like, I love how this kind of kind of the Ghoulish Tales kind of ties back to uh, Cellar Dweller. Oh yeah, right. We were talking about that because Beekler also directed that. Which talking about Patreon, we also did a watch along of that. Uh, again, five or ten dollar tier. Go check that out. Patreon.com slash movie dumpster. It's great. Um, but I think this is canonically tied to that. Like Beekler is a cheeky mother was a cheeky motherfucker. R.I.P. Um, yeah. But I. Uh, I think it's the same universe, right? Like Colin Childress, uh, Jeffrey Combs himself, Colin Childress wrote or drew the fucking Ghoulish Tales right. comic book from that fucking Necronomicon that he's like makes Cellar Dweller from. Well, as we find out at the end of this movie, it does come to life just like in Cellar Dweller. So <laughs> I think same. you're onto something. And it's tied to the comic book itself. Yeah, we, now we just need to do Reanimator to figure out how we get from there to oh. him becoming a comic book artist. Okay. I'm sure that reagent has something to do with it. Yeah, oh, yeah, big time. You know? Yeah, maybe he, like, went to the other side or, like, died. We don't know exactly what happened. In Comic Dweller. Alive, details later. Yeah, was he burned to a crisp? Was he, like, Charles Dexter Ward? You know, who knows? Possibly. Was he Bones and then he, like, fucking, like, got somebody to, like, bring him back from the dead? Who knows? We got to figure it out. We'll tie it up. No problem. We have some time. We'll get to yeah. it. Maybe it was like from beyond, right? Somebody turned on the fucking resonator and he came out of the fucking he, We can make so many world. connections with, with Combs that we just haven't yet. He's in so many bangers we have yet to cover. I know. But. So, so yeah. So 21 years later, like guy guy gets flushed out in the fucking toilet and sort of the ghoulies. Right. Ghoulies are sealed back in the toilet. Yeah, they're in the containment unit. They're in the containment gun's going to go get them. <laughs> the little fucking lights yeah, flashing yeah. and everything. Uh, the light is green. The trap is clean. Right. So we flash forward uh, 21 years and it's just this, it's prank week at, right. uh, what is it, Glacier College? Right, yeah. And we get basically a bunch of shots of people on campus, but uh, they kick off this prank shit immediately before yeah. we even get into the plot of the movie. Yeah, well, they, it's, it's all establishing montage shots of all this shit. Well, I got to mention one in particular, well, well two actually, because there's the one with the condom on the, the goat snout I thought was hilarious. Oh, yeah. But there's this like elaborate like Rube Goldberg ass scene where this guy, this janitor is like mopping like these steps and some kid comes up and fucking unloosens his, the stick and then the fucking bucket goes flying and it knocks over 
none other than Kane fucking Hodder. And then Kane Hodder's like riding his thing like a skateboard. Whoa! Into this like crookshank looking motherfucker who's then papers fly all over. And then I don't know if it's the guy that set up the trap or just some poor bystander who's eating ice cream gets fucking nailed in the face with like a shoe or something. He gets hit with like a book. Right. And his oh, face yeah. goes into the ice cream. Yeah, man. Kane Hodder. Now, is this before? Now, he's like a gym teacher or some shit. Uh, yeah. Is this before or after he's in house? Right. This is when when is <laughs> the med- he goes to Vietnam. He, he goes to he, he went go- he went when he was a little older. He signed up for the war. <laughs> he went. No, he's back. For, yeah, you're right. He's back for Vietnam, but he might be in the Metal Beast program soon. We don't. We're not sure. Well, that is true. Because he goes like, to the, he goes to the hospital. He's injured in this fucking janitor accident. There you go. Right. I was gonna say. You know, in in house. Uh, Roger Cobb, we, we never know if that actually is his spirit, uh, a Big Ben, or if it's just all Roger Cobb subconscious coming out to get him. Also true. So it, we don't know, like in the MDU at the very least, you know, in Movie Doctor Universe, uh, Big Ben, you know, yeah, the Vietnamese, they they tortured the shit out of him, but he was, thank God, in the same <laughs> camp as John McCain. Yeah. So he was saved, and then he, he became a gym teacher trying to, you know, take it easy after that shit, man. He He's was seen in, some stuff. He was fucking minding those, his own business yeah. in that gorilla suit at that party with that old. <laughs> he was <know>, wait, Rams. <laughs> so Kane Hodder's been in House Two, by the way. Yes. Anyone that's confused <laughs> me doing that ridiculous prospector <laughs> accent. Weirdly, the house connection there that keeps coming up now. If but. you missed it, Sean was Gramps for our barbecue. Oh, yeah. No, not a barbecue. A barbecue. Yeah. A barbecue. Excuse that's, me. That, that's a great segue to use that in the video version of this episode. Yeah, in so case if you, you missed it, if you last haven't seen, year, if you haven't seen any of that, or, years or you're new to the show and don't know what the fuck we're talking about, that was like promo things when, when we were audio only. Those we would do these video promos. So yes. now you can go check them out um, if you haven't seen them. But uh, Kane Hodder, yeah, is yeah, now right. is now. In a Ghoulies movie, in a Ghoulies adjacent movie, because he was in a movie with Royal Dano. Right. Weird. So he's technically <laughs> tied to Ghoulies 2 and Ghoulies 3. Uh, uh, is that six degrees of uh, hotter? I don't fucking know, but that's, <laughs> I kind of love it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, not to go off on a side tinge on such a, a, a minute scene, but there you go. Worth noting. Yeah. So then we go to uh, the, the the frat house and we meet our, our key character here. Uh, well, one of our key characters. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. We meet Wes first. I forgot. I was going to yeah. say Skip, but we meet, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. we meet Wes first, who's just, how weak are these fucking walls in this stall? This guy, he's not even shitting. He's not cranking his hog. He's just reading a fucking, the ghoul. Well, he's just reading. I don't know what he's reading because he he's, finds the ghoul. No, no, he's like writing on the yeah, wall oh, that's what and like is. his foot kicks the wall and like breaks a tile. Right. I and always, finds the magazine in there. It's one of my favorite tropes. I think I've talked about this before where like even in like the Madness Room episode of Talks in the Dark Side where I was like, I wish there was like a hidden thing where oh. I found like a hidden something or other hidden somewhere. Yeah, it just it seems a little too convenient, but I guess it gets the movie going. So whatever. Ah. He starts reading it. He pulls it out of the wall. Right. You get you get you get a ghoulie hand out of the toilet, but he stops because he gets pulled away. We get a few of those. Yeah. Where like it, t- it takes a while for the ghoulies to come out of the toilet. Mm-hmm. And that's when. You, OK, so now you need Skip this fucking poor man's Dave Foley, uh, Dave Foley from Kids <laughs> in the Hall and News Radio. That's he what lo- I kept thinking of. He looks like uh, what's his name from fucking Weekend at Bernie's, man. Oh, uh, Andrew. A little uh, bit. Yeah. I I know who you're talking about the, the the guy who's basically Andrew wants McCarthy. To do the scheme. Yeah, Andrew yeah, McCarthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burn, Bernie. Yeah, yeah, like he yeah. totally. Yeah, they could. They should do like a co- a buddy cop the, movie they, together. They could do they it. Could. But yeah, Skip Carter, our 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 hero. Question mark with, with his friends. Listen, I get that the thing is that they're a bunch of college students. This is what the late eighties, early nineties. It's nineteen ninety, so eighty nine. Yeah. Not a whole lot to do on campus, so let's fuck with each other for a week. But goddamn, they take prank week so seriously here. It's, it's a, it's like a fucking thing. Like yeah. with, with between the the betas and the gammas, like that have I guess gone on since the beginning of the fucking uh, college when like the college was yeah. started. Prank week. There's a prank crown and everything. Yeah, and it's like I feel bad for everybody else at this college that's just trying to get a degree. <laughs> Uh, Because, like, they just pull pranks on bystanders. Like, this one guy goes to use the water fountain and just sprays all over his Johnson. And he's like, (laughs) like, he looks so upset. And they're like, ah! (laughs) Like, like Nelson from The Simpsons. Like, he's he's the Yank King. Yeah. The the, the, the crown prince of Yank. And his buddy Mookie. Mookie a- and the rest Mookie, of the crew. I forgot. I forgot what the fuck his actual name is. But oh, he... I wrote it down. Uh, hold oh. on. His last name's a little hard. So bear with me, folks. Patrick Labiar 2. Laborto? Let me fucking see L-A-B-Y-R-O-T. this. L A B Y R O T. Where do you see this? Laborto? 
I think it's Laborto. Laborto. Okay, maybe maybe I overthought it's it. It's French. Uh, or Laborto. Yeah, but but they're, they're he's do- fucking. Do you know who that is? No, no. He's the fucking. Oh, dude, he's the guy from Three Ninjas. Oh, that guy's okay. son who like goes to yeah, capture yeah, the Three yeah, Ninjas yeah. and drinks oh the God. fucking uh, the Coke the the Pepsi with the fucking X Lax in it. Completely forgot about that till so, right now. Yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, he's fine in this, but he's more of just like second banana to to skip. He, he has, has do nothing much. to do in this. He plays a couple pranks. That's it. Yeah. So they're pulling pranks on everybody, and then like they find like a a balloon on the ground, and Skip's like, "Huh, Gamma amateurs!" And then Gamma from like across the way fire a fucking water balloon at this professor uh, Ragnar, played by Kevin McCarthy, and he gets fucking nailed right in the back. And Skip <laughs> Carter, uh, Skip you're standing there with Frank, and you're out of this college because he's standing there with the balloon. Yeah. So it's like they set him up perfect. Yeah. But I want to mention uh, his assistant. Uh, yes, Marcy or uh, Marcia Wallace. Yes, and Knickerbocker. Mar- we'll talk about the Simpsons. <laughs> Not Marcellus Wallace. Is that what you just said? No, Marcia oh, oh, Wallace. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She's great. She's in a. She's definitely like a that gal. She is a that uh, gal for sure. She's in. She's the, she plays the teacher in the asparagus episode of Alf. Oh my! Of asparagus, course she's in Alf. asparagus. Yeah, she plays the fucking teacher. I just know where is Edna Krabappel from The Simpsons. Well, there you go. R.I.P. She's in a bunch of shit now. Uh, she's just like his assistant or something. She's great. Yeah. And, and yeah, you're right. He gets yelled at. Mm-hmm. So then we get to this classroom. Well, hold on, because you're missing a very important character oh, okay. that we missed. Uh, one uh, Sir Matthew Lillard's first oh, movie. He's like this geeky looking bastard he in is, the back. He's got like a bowl cut yeah. and glasses and he's wearing for, a beanie for most of the movie. For how many times I've seen this movie, mm-hmm. I didn't notice how much he was in it, but it's so quick. Like there, it's so quick. Like the scenes. Um, he's wearing a fucking. Uh, I should. I should have been neutered. <laughs> Kick me sign on his back. Uh, why? Born to be neutered. That's what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. At he, one point, he he is literally a background character in this film. Like yeah. he was one of those ones where like I, I was like, oh, what, is that Matthew Lillard? Yeah. Paused it, like looked at. It. I was like, I gotta look this up. Googled. It. I was like, no <laughs> shit, that's Matthew Lillard. Yeah. I I still I only met him once, and mm. I got him. He's on that screen mask, but I mm. need him to sign. A Ghoulies 3 thing. I'm Fuck sure it, he'll right? get a fucking kick out of that. Oh, my God. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, by the way, who's in the Twilight Zone movie and in an MDU classic, The Midnight Hour. Oh, Go man. check that out from our Trick or Trash. Uh, what was that, two years ago? A couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years back. Yeah. He gets turned into a fucking zombie. Oh, it's great. Uh, he is just one of those actors, man. Every time, like I, I already think I already said it in the plot crunch, but he always plays like a shit heel character, he's and he's so, great at he's it. He's so good at it. Yeah. So uh, how does it fit into the MDU? Like, did... Is he, he's the Dean first, right? He's gotta be, right? And then he's the shitty, Dom DeWeese's son's shitty dad in in the midnight hour. Right. And then turns into a zombie and then maybe, hits maybe him with that a fucking was his car. Job, and maybe that's why he was so bitter because he kept getting like Could be. pranks played on him. Yeah. So he was like a mean old man. <laughs> fucking Halloween pranks. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, he basically, his, his classroom is just filled with crap. Just prank shit. These, these, again, these people take pranks so seriously. They're like tying each other's shoes. You know, in the middle of class, there's just garbage all over the place. It looks like the fucking scene in the Christmas story where all the kids have all the toys. Uh, it, oh, it's, it's chaos. I want to set up uh, Aaron Riddle's character real Oh, quick. yes. Uh, uh, Skip's girlfriend. Yes, played by Eva LaRue. Or yes. Eva, Eva, yeah, Eva LaRue. Who, who is apparently in the spiritual successor to Robot Jocks, Crash and Burn, I Yeah, saw. and RoboCop 3 as well. Yes. And even a couple episodes of uh, Freddy's Nightmares. She's, she's mostly a big character, though. Yeah, we gotta get we gotta get to crash and burn and robot wars. There, there, Joe, there's a lot of stuff we need I to get know. to. It's just a matter I, of time. I feel scheduling. So, I feel so bad because everybody's like, "When are you gonna do this? When are you gonna do that?" I'm like, "Oh, I want to do I that. Know. I want to do that." I'm like, "Yeah, we got no fucking time to I do know. that." Like, I mean, not enough time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff. For anyone wondering if, if if we've been like, "Yeah, we're gonna do that," they are coming. We're not we're not pulling your fucking leg. If, if we could do an episode every week, we would. But if, uh, if we could do this for a living, you would have maximum content. Yes. So I just want to remind you once again that we do have that Patreon. <laughs> yes, patreon.com slash movie dumpster. There you go. Uh, two, five, and ten dollar tiers. Yes. And uh, you get some cool stuff with them. Yeah. So check them out. And that would be great one day. Yes. But until then. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, so we get introduced to Erin. She's pissed off at Skip because like Skip's, Skip's he's an idiot. Skip stood her up because he's pranking fucking people and shit. Um, and that's like more important. So there's like that. There's like right. Th- oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she's like, oh, I don't want to date a prankster. And then she immediately goes out with his fucking rival prankster. And I'm like, 
Hold the phone. You don't know this guy's a fucking prankster? I think she knows he's a piece of shit. She's just trying to piss Skip off to like get him in line. Well, because I, later I we find out like she only is like going out with him uh, to to piss, to off, piss Skip. off Skip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this Bradster motherfucker, Jer- well, Jeremy Mine. Mind- Hitler mind- Youth. Yeah, Jeremy like Mine. What is, what is it? He- Heilman. Yeah. Heil- something Heilman. like that. Kyle. Kyle Jeremy. Uh, he's an annoying ass character. He's a piece of shit. He's a fucking Bradster, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Skip's not, like, the most likable character ever, but he's kind of, like, portrayed as, like, this, like, goofball kind of guy. He's go- he's goofball every man kind of dude. Yeah. I don't know. I'd hang out with him. I wouldn't want to be his fucking enemy with these damn pranks. <laughs> Fuck that. So, yeah. So, we get our, our first class with uh, Kevin McCarthy right. as Ra- Professor Ragnar. And um, he he's not going to have any of this prank bullshit. I'll tell you what, Sean. <laughs> Turns the fucking chalkboard over. <laughs> they have him drawn as like a fucking centaur, centaur. <laughs> but like in a, the most unflattering way possible. Sean, this is funny. You think that's funny, huh? Huh, yeah. Sean? You think that's funny? He gets all pissed, and then he starts talking about Pandora's box, which eh, a little on the nose from Beekler's point, you that's know, standpoint, fine. For, based on what happens later. But I, I love, I love the use of ancient medieval like they say that it's like medieval yeah. incantations and all this bullshit because there's obviously spillover from troll because that's something that Beekler yeah. was very into and of course the occult and all that kind of oh, stuff yeah. that comes with the ghoulies and the, and, and the monsters and stuff but like it's just so weird to like have it in this film I think that's why it's so fucking nuts and yeah, I love it yeah, so much yeah yeah uh, you know, then Wes, of course, isn't paying attention. He's the guy that found the comic yeah. book making out with Veronica's mm. girlfriend and you know the professor takes the fucking magazine. He's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Starts reading it. So again, this is the second tease. You think the ghoulies are going to get out of the toilet, but no. Stops reading it. I'll save this for later. <laughs> then you get one more gag on this poor bastard. He goes to take the book off the fucking uh, the lectern, and this giant inflatable alligator starts coming out. Ramon himself inflates. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, and this guy's t- Robert Forster's gonna be like, "Well, that's real fucking funny, kid." <laughs> He's in the back funny. of the room. Meanwhile, Kevin McCarthy's head looks like it's about to explode. <laughs> like that toupee is gonna fly off the top of his head. I wanted to be a cop. They said I wanted to be a preacher. Well, I don't know. Uh, uh. And then you know that's you kind of just it's it's setting up the characters. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, Skip is played by Evan McKenzie. Oh yeah, I, I I started calling him Dave Foley. Uh, the, the <laughs> poor man, Dave Foley. We never actually gave his name. No, he's in Bad Dreams and uh, Scanner Cop Two. Oh, okay. Just just to pop that in there, I want to give him the just do because and there was a, the reason for that is as silly and stupid as this movie is, everybody's acting their ass off. Oh, like yeah, yeah. like they're doing a really good job <laughs> for taking for the, it seriously. Uh, yeah, for the content of this film, I think the acting lines up. Yeah. Uh, so then we go to this fucking first of many frat parties that I'm sure Gramps is at one of these, you know, breaking his dick off of one of these chicks. <laughs> oh, it's floating. Yeah. It's floating around. And I can't even. You I can got, you know, Spivey gave me this uh, <laughs> cucumber and, you know, it's from doing, I used it on Granny Man Dan quite a bit. Oh, but boy. I just turn it around for the flesh blood. You know, that young <laughs> pussy. You need, you need a nice firm end of the cucumber. Why I use on old Granny Man Dan? That thing's all shriveled up. It's like a raisin. It's like putting your fingers in water, leaving them in there for a few minutes. You go like this, they come out. I haven't done this voice in a while, and it's starting to actually come out good. I can't believe it. (laughs) I think I broke Joe. But, you know, again, house two, go back and listen to that episode. Let's let's go step in there, sweetheart. Uh, You know, he's got that. Bippy's there. He's he's got beer. He's at the beer bottle. Yeah, Bippy's there. Bippy's hanging out with the fucking ghoulies, dude. I think he crawled out of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're getting drunk. I think the fish ghoulies like riding him at one point. (laughs) Probably. Could be. It's the MDU, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Um, Uh, (laughs) But they're having this. Before you broke me in half. (laughs) Yeah, just like that ghoulie's going to do to Bippy, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you realize that's how that came across to right oh, this oh, moment. Oh, you just right? Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, they're probably, yeah, the ghoulies are probably poor fucking Bippy. that poor dog. Poor Bippy. Poor, that poor cat or puppy's probably getting fucked by that fish ghoulie. Gramps Bippy. is just looking at him like, my <laughs> Bippy's grown up. Go get him, Bippy. My my Bippy bear. Nice one. Um, <laughs> We meet some more characters in this frat There's scene, a party the going on again yeah, because yeah. we kick up the fucking party going on music, which I love. Uh, but we get introduced to 
Jason Scott Lee. Jason Scott Lee, and of course, Mr. Yamabachi <laughs> is is also a character in this movie. Uh, okay, so this guy is like the ultimate Asian stereotype, and he won't shut up about his fucking stereo. That's the joke. <sighs> Look at my Yamabachi. And it's, yeah. you know, it's got three laser discs, blah, blah, blah. See, the, and he's trying to like mack it to these girls. And this, they're just like, you're a fucking pud. I, I will say this about this stereotype. I have to hope and, and assume that Mr. Beekler was like, hey, this is a stupid trope in a lot of movies that have been coming out the last 10 years. Fuck it. Let's just lean into it. Because that's like all that character does is go on about his stereo. Yeah, but like, do you not think that that actor's not in on the guy? Oh, yeah. 100%. Like, of 100%, course. 100%. Yeah. But what's funny is. He's also Mowgli in the live action Jungle Book, which I've brought up multiple times on this that's show. That's where he eats the fly, right? Yes. And, okay. and, and they have uh, King Louis, like a big ape. Yes. And they have like uh, the. the the, the final scene is inside the temple with, uh, I forget the name of the snake, but the snake, but Ka, Ka mm -hmm. is under the water and all that. It's, yeah, that's, it's actually pretty scary cool. for a kid. But. I would love to actually revisit that. Uh, but he's, me too. he's also in uh, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, as, as Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. That's he like also, his big one. He also played like the main bad guy in the Mulan live action I saw. The new one, which yeah, is yeah. crazy that he's still acting. Bo, uh, Bo Rye, I think his name is or something like that. Something like that. Uh, anyway. He was in Balls of Fury, too. Yes. He's in a lot of shit. He's yeah. a good actor, so it was kind of funny to see him in here. Uh, but he he's actually pretty good. As much as I'm like goofing on this character, because yeah. I just think it's a little silly. But it's uh, good. It's a good setup and payoff. Though. Yeah, no, I, I agree. <laughs> Mr. Yamabachi's great. What happens to Mr. Yamabachi later? <laughs> that poor fucking uh, uh, audio console. Yeah, so we're we're kind of easing into the into the movie at this point, and now we kind of set up some more of these characters. We Wes and Ronnie go up to the bedroom, it skips room because it has all the equipment. Veronica, by the way, we for, we failed to mention is uh, Hope Marie Carlton. OK, uh, she is Taryn in Hard Ticket to Hawaii, Savage Beach and Picasso Trickers plays the same fucking character. Have you ever seen Hard Ticket to Hawaii? I haven't seen any of those movies. Oh, my God. It's fantastic. Uh, my buddy Evan Kyle introduced me to that show, uh, that movie, and it's fucking insane. It's just like a crazy action flick, mm -hmm. like a low budget action flick. Uh, at the peak of like crazy canon oh, wow. action flick shit, and there's like a fucking snake <laughs> that that's like poisonous and like bites you and like gives you cancer and shit. It's oh fucking insane. God. She's also in Slaughter Slaughterhouse Rock and Slumber Party uh, Massacre Three. She's in a bunch of shit. Okay, so um, fairly well known. Then I think she's pretty time. great. I think she's pretty great. Like all around in this. Yeah, I think she's good. She played again. Like this isn't a parody per se, but it is spoofing some of these ideas throughout. Yeah. Um, she's also the pinup girl in, uh, Narnell street four. So that lines uh, up. So how's mean, that for a wet dream? Kind of her main character trait is that she wants to fuck. Is that she's sexy. Uh, and, and she wants to take her clothes off. And you know, that that's basically her character. So her and her, her and Wes are fucking on the treadmill and <laughs> the on, bike, on the, the bike, bike and everything. It's pretty funny. Actually, like exercise equipment, like gets her hot and shit. Yeah, it's yeah. good. And he's like, he, he's fucking sweating his ass off, losing breath and whatnot. Oh, Me so meanwhile, while this party's going on. There's a party going on. Kevin McCarthy's thumbing through not only this ghoulish tales, but also the fucking Tobin spirit guide to try to find these, <laughs> these, these symbols he finds inside and he's comparing them. He's like, huh, <laughs> satanic symbols. It looks, it looks TM. just like this grimoire picture with this thing with a prank crown on it. Right, head. the thing on the cover. And it shows, and it's cool because it shows you, because uh, on the cover of the Ghoulish Tales, it's like this demon guy with like this face on his yeah. chest. But then in the book, there's like this, I, I don't even know what, it looks like some kind of like ancient like Mayan garb or some shit. And yeah. then like something like that. And it has like this weird like hat on and like this like, uh, uh, ceremonial dress but it has that face on it again it right, looks yeah. it looks like one of the pages out of the fucking dark book oh yeah of the sacrifix album but yeah but then but then we cut back to the frat yeah, now yeah, this yeah. is all intercut by the way I, there's a lot happening in this part but it starts setting up the movie so yeah. i'm like okay. and again there's another false start of the ghoulies where he starts to read it and he doesn't conjure them exactly right. starts just to yet. thunder out and shit yeah so uh so we get introduced to Stephen lee here as officer barkus right okay I love this guy. He's he's Ralph in Dolls. I, I still haven't seen Dolls. Oh man, we kept talking about doing know, it, and yeah. it was on the schedule, and then we switched it out. We got to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like one of my favorite like horror fantasy. Movies, I may just like, watch it. Time. It's you dude, know, I've you heard should. It's, so good. it's great. It's yeah. really great. He he's 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 a good comedy relief character in this. 
Some of the things that happened to him kind of break the movie for me, but then I have to remind myself that this is more of a comedy than a horror, and it, then I just am okay. But yeah. it's like he has he has an arc throughout this. <laughs> put it well, that way, he's the bad guy in Prehistoria, the first it, one, the first movie. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of like band crossover there, mm -hmm. but he's also the crooked cop in RoboCop Two that gets his ass kicked in the arcade. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, and he passed away in 2014. Yeah, I saw that. So R.I.P. Stephen Lee. But when he's introduced, um, <laughs> Skip, Skip's waiting for his girlfriend to come over because they're on kind of that rocky uh, uh, patch at the moment. Mm. And uh, he goes, ah, oh, there you are, sexy. And it's fucking like, Barkus. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, hey, any of you guys mess with my car? You see Bonnie over there? I got a fucking, there's like three, yeah, co yeah. three coats of uh, a boat varnish on it. Uh, uh, what is it? I, I don't, don't even know. Some kind of paint. Honeymoon beige or some shit like that. Uh, meanwhile, Mookie's walking. This over man his... wants to fuck his cart, his his go kart or his uh golf cart. He, yeah, yeah it's, it sure sounds like it. He's getting under there. Ooh. Do you think he hangs out with Charnetsky at like the security guard bar? Uh, Charnetsky, yeah, he doesn't hang out with that type. He's, he's a weird dude, but he doesn't hang out with people fucking cars. That Barkus is a fucking weirdo, man. He wants to fuck his car. Miss July kind of brings a tear to your eye, don't it? Yeah, but I want to fuck my car. I don't know. None of that. Get out of here, kiddo. You want Dobby to fuck car? <laughs> oh, no. What did I say, Dobby? We're not talking about you. Uh, God damn it, elephant. We, would you go away? Okay. Haggerty, would you get this fucking elf out of here already? <laughs> I I'm thought doing we business. killed you today already. Oh, Dobby, he's already back. Harry Potter already buried me and I was already brought back <laughs> once today. Hey, Dobby, you like Swedish films? Dobby is scared. <laughs> I want to show you Bonnie. You want to meet Bonnie? Oh, God. Imagine that. He makes mm. him watch. He, like, cucks Dobby with oh, his car. Oh, my goodness. I wear, <laughs> You're going to watch underwear. this man fuck his car, Dobby, or we're going <laughs> to blow your head off. <laughs> yes, Mr. Chodotsky! Parkus, like, also wears women's underwear because he's got uh, sensitive skin. Yeah, this guy's, like, a weird, Question weird mark? character. Yeah, he says later during this panty raid, I could, bar I could just hold your panties and, uh... I'll give him back Monday or... Yeah, yeah, well, he's, like, sweating. Tuesday or Friday? Yeah, biting his lip and shit. But anyway... So he's he's chatting up Skip about yeah you know this party better not get out of hand. And meanwhile, Mookie grabs this inflatable like naked woman and puts like it's it on the sex doll. Yeah, puts it on the uh, ignition of his car and it starts driving away. He's like, oh, Betty! And he chases it down. All the Barker stuff is fucking funny, yeah. man. He's he's hilarious. Um, and then finally, uh, Erin shows up, but she shows up just when you think this would only happen once in a lifetime, but the first of multiple times in this film where Skip just has his hands on another woman's breasts. Uh, yeah, How often does that just randomly happen? Twice. I don't know. It's, it's college. Uh, sure. It's prank week. Well, to be fair, he, I mentioned Porky's earlier, to, so to, it, it lines up. To be fair, this one is like some drunk girl that has like an, uh, a fucking like deer head <laughs> yeah. on her that he's trying to pull off. The other one is just a nymphomaniac yeah, that's well, trying to get right. fucked. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, Aaron. Uh, and he's like, <laughs> Oh, she knows, oh, I didn't know this was a stag party. <laughs> Pretty a, great. That's a good one. Hey, too much alcohol, yeah, Sean. Yeah. Um, so he rushes out there and he's yeah. like, oh, it's not what you thought. She, you know, she's drunk. I'm trying to help. Yeah. She's like, that's it. You care more about pranks than me. I'll go with a real man. And then here comes Jeremy on this fucking oh, green Vespa. Oh, God. He but, fucking, he gives, uh, uh, she gives him like his letter jacket back. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to hang out with the Bradster now. And meanwhile, Mookie's in the background like, <laughs> Oh man, bro! I hope this is gonna be okay. He's not even there for like emotional support. No. He's just there. And then, and then after she leaves and basically breaks up with him for real this time, uh, he he, you know, Skip walks back all defeated, and Mook's like, "Hey, I know it'll cheer you up. A prank, a good prank, a good prank." And he's like, "You know what, Mook? That's a pretty good idea. Let's go do it." Yeah. So they take the whole goddamn frat with them, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Hey, Wesley, yeah, uh, yeah, you and uh, Ronnie take care of the place, or else you're dead." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch it that that the fucking gammas don't come over and fuck right. anything up. Is it the betas? Uh, no, they're the betas. The gammas are the are their enemies. Are the bad guys, Jeremy, right? the bad the, guys, the Hitler Youth Group, yes. or whatever. Uh, so they leave just in time for Professor Ragnar to summon the fucking ghoulies. <laughs> All right, F uh, what does he say? Lux Tenembre ghoulies appear, a eh? or yeah. some shit, <laughs> something like that. It's fucking great. Darkest. Uh, Symbiote. I forget what the fuck yeah, he says. Yeah, Metamorphosis. Yeah. He says something. Anyway. Yeah, what is this fucking Alucard? Dark Metamorphosis. <laughs> yeah. 
pretty much. Um, so so they, they they come out of the toilet they and they're immediately mom, Larry and Curly. Oh up. man, they're fucking. I think like, there's even a little shemp in there. Honestly, they're smacking each other. They're fucking smacking each other's heads together. They got the stooge sound effects. But don't. The fucking, they got the fucking rat ghoulies in there. He's in there. and uh, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, the, the cat ghoulies there. Sounds like fucking Dom DeLuise. He kind of, his voice changes. Not quite munchy, but. And then they got the fish ghoulie. Yeah, who's basically Mo. Yeah. The other two are interchangeable between Larry it's and Curly. fucking great. Th- these things, not. So these are like the most advanced. They're very expressive. These are the most advanced ghoulies that we've seen so far. And there's only three of them. And they're like main characters, right? So oh, they're yeah. like, And they're like bigger than normal, too. Yeah, um, and they're but they very... don't feel off. They feel perfect. No, no, they feel great. It, great it, size, good size, good size, a good size pain in my. It's a thing of like they're they're big enough to the point where they can have like human hands, like in gloves. Like they do that a hands. few times. Yeah, yeah I kind of love yeah. that so much. I don't know. They're fucking funny as hell. So they're farting around and fucking burping and pissing on each other and <laughs> literally whatever. farting. Yeah, At one yeah. point, the cat ghoul is just ripping ass. Oh, the fucking rat one does it too. Uh, pulling a Christopher Lloyd. So we get like the main ones, I guess, that Beekler liked from the other movies was the cat, the rat, and the and the uh, the fish mm-hmm. ghoulie. Yeah. So we we get some uh, some oogling of this girl getting fucked in, uh, in uh, Skip's bed. <laughs> oh. I hope they're gonna watch the cheats. Oh, hot cross buns. Yeah. And they're like fucking talking, and they're all making comments. Like it, there's like all like sound effects that accompany them yeah. too. Like it's very stu- It's like a fucking cartoon. So. Then Kevin McCarthy realizes that he can control the ghoulies. Like, somehow he, like, figures it out. Well, he reads a line out of the comic, which is like, uh, appear before your dark lord. Yeah, and they appear, and they're like, ah, oh, man, we, we just missed the hot oh, stuff. Missed a babe. Where's the babe? <laughs> so then he's like, you know, this guy's on the ultimate power trip. Now that he, he realizes he could summon demons. Because Veronica's ass is just, like, weeping. Oh, yeah, in the, yeah. In the, yeah, anyway. Going full of Alyssa Milano. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Um... So then, you know, he basically is like, yeah, oh, yeah, you're going to work for me now. Yeah, he gets on this power trip because, like, Ragnar's just fucked up. And, like, his his main goal is just to get back at the kids. Just oh, to yeah. get back. Oh, yeah. Like, He's he a bitter hates, bastard. He hates them so much that he uses the power of darkness to stop Prank Week. Yeah. That's it. So he sends them back. I forget why or what he says. But he He's says, like, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go back. So I guess they come through the toilet. Talk about flu powder from Harry Potter. No, they go back into the bathroom. Right, yeah, And yeah. Wes, Wes is getting his fucking brains fucked out by Veronica. I guess he's getting kind of raw down there because yeah. he looks like relieved to be like, oh, I heard a noise. Let me uh, rip my dick out of you. I gotta go. He's like pulls his underwear back and just a point. cloud smoke flies out like a burn mark. <laughs> it's like fucking Harry's hand in Home Alone. Oh my God. Sizzling and shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Um, he goes into the bathroom, I guess, to, I don't know what, wipe his dick off. And the yeah. ghoulies are in there. And uh, they're just like, oh, naughty boy, you forgot to flush. And then the fucking- Oh, God, well, hold on. He looks in that toilet that they came out of, yeah. and this, it looked like just pure diarrhea. <laughs> I just was thinking of uh, the scene in Blank Man when they're looking for the bomb in the building, and David Allen Greer opens the one stall, and he goes, ah, he's like, oh, did you find the bomb? Not the one we're looking for. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But yeah, that, then they start killing him, and one the fucking Rackley grabs a uh, 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 a toilet brush and shoves it up his asshole. The the or hits him in the balls with it or something. Two balls, one strike. Yeah. The sound that it makes when it hits him in the dick is like this bone crunching sound. Yeah. Oh my. God. There's a lot of nut trauma in this. You know what? I'm very excited to bring it back because we've been missing a lot of MDU ball trauma. I mean, season one, Baby's Day Out, did so much ball trauma that it almost like covered the rest of the Baby's series. Baby's Day Out, uh, Tammy and the T-Rex. Yes. What was the other ball trauma? There was a bunch of ball traumas. Uh, anyway. Uh, probably House 2, since it keeps coming up, probably had some ball trauma in uh, it. Maybe. We get, well, <laughs> there's a lot of nut shots in this. Yeah, there are. There Fucking are. Uh, Stephen Lee hits himself in his in the dick with his <laughs> nightstick. People get hit in the dick with a fucking uh, uh, toilet brush. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, Ragnar like, knees somebody in the dick. I was going to say the janitor in the beginning when he's chasing after yeah, the, his the, dick the, hits the fucking yeah, the railing. Uh, the railing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There is a lot of nut shots in this. Um, but yeah, so the ghoulies are like just wandering around after they shove this guy literally in the toilet and his, his legs are like up dude, by his head. It's awesome. Like yeah. his foot is like up by his head and they're like shoving him like they're like jumping on his head and shit, flushing him. So then they're just like walking around in fucking ghoulie POV. <laughs> And the fish school is like, I gotta go on a beer run. 
And they go in this, Beer run. Yeah, they go in this fridge, and it's an awesome like earthworm like uh, POV. You're forgetting they get fucking. They like run into like a thing of clothes. Oh yeah, the clothes fall right because this movie's about things falling on things. Yeah, and you know the clothes fall on them. Now they're cut. Now they look like frat boys. Yeah, they're like they get covered in clothes yeah, and they yeah, like yeah. shake it all off. And the raccoon's got like a fucking like denim vest yeah. on. And uh, fish has like the hat turned up. Hat turned up with like a fucking uh, tie, a, a tie. And the cackoolie has a jersey on. Yeah, right. And that then fit they, perfectly because there's children that live at this fraternity. Obviously. Yeah. And then yeah, then they get the beer run. I just and, take one. The cackoolie <laughs> from the bottom and, the, and apparently two thousand and one beers all. 2001 of them. This is great. Like, Come crashing When down. you tell somebody about this movie, you're like, oh yeah, and the ghoulies, there's a beer drinking montage with and ghoulies. And f- a, a beer drinking, farting, and burping scene. <laughs> it's fucking great. Well, they eat pizza and shit. They eat pizza and shit. They, uh, they, they drink Drano at one point. Oh yeah, the rat ghoulie drinks yeah. it and is like, fucking smoke comes Coming out of, like, out his, of ears. his ears. Yeah, yeah. and then they, they give it to Cackle to like fuck with him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's good, it's good. Cackle who drinks it, like, yeah, this is great. Oh, it's, it's a little light. It's filling. Yeah, or, like, oh, yeah, not yeah, filling yeah, or whatever yeah, the fuck he yeah. says. They're like, Arr. I love the imported stuff. Yeah. So, so the, the the betas come back and the fucking house is trashed. Oh, All the yeah. beers are drank. The fucking the, oh, at one point, like the the uh the Rakuli takes a fucking axe to Mister Yamabachi. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, my mother and my father. And right. Fuck them all. Because that Jason Scott Lee's like, Mr. Yamabachi. <laughs> Mr. Yamabachi. Uh, and he, won't, he keeps like saying it over and over again. Or when, or take a sip yeah. from Mr. Yamabachi. <laughs> um, so the fucking whole place is trashed. Um, so they decide to get, they think it's the, the Gamma. So they want to go get back at uh, Jeremy and them. Right. Well, there's a series of miscommunications because like Skip and Mookie, they they set up uh, Jeremy Jeremy's bike so that when he pulls away, these like trash bags will fall on it. Yeah, like a but, biff situation. But when they walk away, the ghoulies the, come out of the yeah, garbage and then they're just like, eh, all right, we'll take care of this. And the rat ghoulie with the same axe. Actually, you know, he's got Triple H's sledgehammer. It's a this fucking time. sledgehammer. He grabbed it from under the ring. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, he just smashes the shit out of this. You just see pieces flying, like, you know, like the mask or something Give it like a little that. body work. And you find out later that uh, apparently this thing was destroyed and thrown into the fucking tree. It, yeah, like <laughs> in front of campus. Oh, it's fucking great. At the same time, Kevin McCarthy decides he wants the crown because fuck these pranks. So he has the ghoulies steal the, the crown from the gammas. And they think, basically the whole point is they think that the one side thought that they did, they fucked up the bike, and the other side thinks that they yeah. stole the 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 crown. Yes, and this all kind of happens back and forth over like a ten or fifteen minute. Course well, Ragnar of Ragnar does that to start a war, right? Like, He's like, "This is gonna be the frat war to end all uh, frat wars." Uh, I'm gonna get the pranking crown. Yeah, fucking, right. Hello, yeah. ghoulies, get the pranking crown. I mean, the ghoulies are already causing mischief. They're like, "Oh, you want us to cause more? Okay." <laughs> He's like, "I'm your dark lord, Ragnar," and they're like, "Rag ass." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, when they're mimicking him at one point. Oh, well, that's later. Yeah. Okay, we'll get to. Yeah, that. We'll get to that. Yeah. But but we get that scene real quick with with Ronnie in the room because she sh- she shares a room with Aaron. So uh, well, right, because we go to the panty raid. Yeah, but not that's like that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is the this is the other scene where he like goes in uh to Aaron's room and Ronnie's there and she's like trying to fuck him. And, oh, like, she's like, right. oh my, skip, my, skip, right. Yeah, skips there and he's like because he wants to talk to Aaron and kind of smooth it and over. And he's also trying to find out where Wes is. Yes, because she was fucking Wes at right. some point. And the and the place is wrecked and he's like, oh well, Wes is dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So he's asking her if she's heard anything or like anything from the gammas or whatever, and she's like, oh my bra broke, and he's like. <laughs> She like grabs him and he's she's got her. Got a, hold on, she's got a nightgown on first. Yeah. Then she's down to just the bra and panties. Yeah. Then her bra broke. She oh, sure is. Okay. And then uh, and he's like, oh, oh yeah. And he's like, Aaron, I what? Yeah, right. As he's cupping with his her hands breasts. full of tits, right? Uh, I I don't know about that one, Skip. You're blowing it big time, man. <laughs> I don't think so, dude. She strolls in with fucking Jeremy, Jeremy. and he's like, oh, would you? Would you Fuck Jeremy all night. And she's like, that's none of you bitch. He is lucky after she caught him like that. She didn't just unzip Jeremy's pants and start <laughs> sucking it, you know, raw. Like, Skip, you're, you're fucking over to my friend. You're fucked, brother. 
So, uh, but you're right. Yeah. Then, so, well, then, we, then they, we have that panty raid is later that. Well, night. we have the panty raid, but there's a quick thing of like, we actually see the fucking scooter go up in the, in the right. tree and Barkus is there and the fucking ghoulies like rewire Bonnie oh. and the, it, it electrocutes Barkus when he's like right. in the fucking thing. He, he keeps getting like killed basically, I but fucking because love he's it, a dude. joke character, he yeah. survives every time. I love it. So now we get to the, the, the yes. panty raid. Yeah. Uh, if you girls want to give me your panties, you know, I'll hang on to them for you for the weekend. Maybe give them back Monday or Tuesday or maybe Friday. Uh, there's a lot of like B stories happening here because yeah. you have like the girls in the fraternity. They're like, these boys aren't going to get our panties this year. We're going to we're going to fight back. And it's like, all right. I kind of love it, though. And then like Erin, Erin's going on a date with Jeremy. She's leaving and Veronica comes back, but she has a date, too. So she goes upstairs. Right. And they're like, they're like, oh, uh, what does she call her? Ronnie baby? It's something like Some that. Some shit like that. She's like, she's like, where are you going? She's like, I have a date or whatever. She's like, but it's the panty raid. And she's like, uh, whatever. So she goes up to her room. Right, she strips down again, of course. Well, well, she's like, she's like, there's gonna be a bunch of horny guys outside. So Ronnie's like, oh, uh, well, okay. cranks up the fucking uh some like it hot. Opens the window. Yeah. And we had <laughs> There we go. We start this, taking it off, baby. This woman had it figured out. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want me to just, like, take my clothes off? You're going to pay me to just do that? That's my <laughs> only role in this film? Yeah, all right. Parkins is outside on a branch. Well, like, looking fucking at her ass George cheeks. McFly. Yeah. And the ghoulies fucking saw the branch off and he falls. It's it's slapsticky as hell, it's but I kind of love it. It's great. So and then the Kakuli has that great line. They're like watching Ronnie fucking shake her ass and tits. And the Kakuli's like, I'm suddenly hungry. Yeah, again. I'm hungry again. Okay. You want some milk? Kakuli, is that the implication? <laughs> Got milk and they like, she like takes her panties off and goes and takes a shower. Well, yeah, because she just hears them oogling. She doesn't yeah. actually look and see it's a bunch of fucking puppets. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's just dudes. So she's like holds the underwear outside yeah. like the bathroom door and yeah. drops it. Oh, it's uh, they're off. They're off. Yeah. So Danny Ray. Yeah, right. We have the kind of like as it's like cut together, the uh, the three kind of like Mookie and the three other like characters that are kind of part of Beta Zeta. Yeah. Are sneaking in while she's stripping. Ghoulies are sneaking in kind of simultaneously. Yeah, this is all happening at the same time. They do the penny raid. They end up like the boys have been had. And they come out with like fucking pillows, pillows. topless. So they Dude, get that at least. Fucking ke- get me caught up in there somehow, sure, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then the ghoulies. So so Ronnie goes to take a shower, and the ghoulies do like a fucking like little rascals uh, gag where they're oh, all on they're each other, on each other, yeah. <laughs> each other's soul shoulders and they kill Ronnie with a fucking uh like they, they get like fan of the paradise right right cuz they 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 hit him with the they hit her with the plunger, the plunger and like to the pull, face, it, yeah. pull her face off that's what i'm saying earlier it's like cartoony it's great it's like a Roger Rabbit kill they get beefed straight yeah, up yeah yeah there's a couple like Roger Rabbit ass kills in this for lack of a better term the effects work is very good but it's silly as shit so yeah. she's out of the movie yeah. they there also is a scene cuz Fuck it again. Why not? It's basically Porky's meets Ghoulies, uh, where they're just looking at the other girls in the shower. Yeah. And, so- like, Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. and you get butts and you get, you get everything. It's pretty great. Beekler's like, teen we're getting this comedy. rated R. Well, it's a teen sex comedy. No, I know. Uh, so then they, uh, the panty raid is over. It's, it's, it's not successful for some. Put it that way. I think it was, but the success. ghoulies are successful. They I have think, panties I, I, in their I, mouth. I think the the ghoulies are like eating Aaron and <laughs> Ronnie's underwear, and they're like fighting over it and yeah. shit, which is hilarious. Heilman realizes that the crown is gone because the ghoulies had taken it and given it to Ragnar, mm. and he gets all fucking pissed off. So he like concocts this plan to get back at Skip, right? By making a fucking what is it? A giant stink bomb? No, 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 no. This is they. This is the desk thing. You're right, the desk yeah. thing yeah. first. So, because Skip's saying basically, because Aaron it, it left him because he's too much of a prankster, yeah. that he swore off pranks. He's never doing pranks well, ever again. Yeah, he goes to smooth it over with her in the library, and she's with like, coffee. And she's like, what about with tea? And he's like, whatever works, dear. Oh, that's a good scene. Yeah, that's no, a, I like that, it. That's, that's a good a, scene. That's, it's really well written because he, he's like, coffee? She's like, tea. He's like, sugar? He's like, honey. He's like, sweetie. <laughs> And then she's like, all right, enough bullshit. Get to the point. It's like, funny. Yeah. So they, they reconcile and they're yeah. basically like, let's start it over. You know, we're we'll going on a date tomorrow night. Right. So then you're right. Then Jeremy spoilers has his, whole, his old scheme. It doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. Well, it doesn't happen because of the panty raid. Yes. She's like, you should have known about it. You should have told them to not do it. And he's like, <laughs> but what does that have to do with him? That ah. was weird because it was like, Barkus came there and told you that there was going to be a panty right. raid. Were you pissed off at him then? You know what I mean? Right, because Barkus told her, and, and and it wasn't Skip. 
I don't know. No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Unnecessary tension. So he's all pissed off. He's going to go yell at the other guys. Yeah. They come out. Oh, no, we didn't get any panties at all. They, they pummeled us with pillows. He's like, huh, what the hell? <laughs> the, the girls took their pants and their underwear and shit. Yeah, They're like, we're going to yeah. fly them up the flagpole, boys. Oh, yeah, they get that payback. Was, that that was, was, the girls come in. Yeah, that was I good. I like that a lot. Um, So we cut back and we see uh, Marcia Wallace. Right. Researching researching comics. the comic books because she because Ragnar tasked her with finding out more about the ghoulish tale because right, he's trying to find any way to get more power over these yeah. things or like yeah really like uh, get the jump on the ghoulies yep. and like figure out how to maximize his power oh yeah uh, so she comes running in yeah. like fucking Gandalf from from Gondor <laughs> like in the beginning of Fellowship <laughs> yeah she's on Shadow Facts and everything dun, dun, oh for dun. sure. And she's telling Ragnar, like, oh, you know, there, there's, it was written from, like, ancient medieval incantations, and the, it, it was never published because there, there was a big fire. And I'm like, that yeah. was fucking Jeffrey Combs, dude. That was the basement. Oh, that was the cellar yeah, dweller okay. basement, okay. right? Yeah. That was, like, his that was like his next line of comic books that were going to come out, right? right? Ghoulish exactly. Tales. Yeah. It's starting to come together. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but right before she comes in, the ghoulies are basically, like, about to kill Kevin McCarthy and he's holding it over them that it, they can't because he has a comic book and he he, he kind of threatens them by putting a lighter under it and everything and they freak out. Yeah. So they're ready to just kill anything that walks in the room and he knows that. He's so like, when she walks in, he's almost like, ah, now's not a good time. He's like taunting them. Yeah. And he's, like, he's like, come on, kill me. Come on, I'm here. I want you to kill me. And they go, and he's like, I see you can't. I was just fucking with he's you. Like, like, ah. he's like, he puts a comic book in like a drawer and he's yeah. like, look, I obviously can't get the comic book. Come and get me. Because he like tells them that like if they attack him, he gets their power. He'll, he will absorb them and get their power. Right. Yeah. It's just part of the incantation. That it's part of it's part of the like the ritual thing. Yeah. To make that fucking monster thing that's on the cover as we find out. Right. Well, so, so, so Marcia right. comes in. Kravapal Car- comes Car- in. Kravapal yeah. comes in. And the f- and she's sneezing because she's like, "Wait, well, you got a cat in here? Mm-hmm. The fucking cat ghoulie grabs this woman's tongue and like pulls it out cat of her got mouth. Your tongue. Cat got your tongue. Yeah. It spins it around <laughs> her like she's a mummy. Like a top. <laughs> fucking love it so much and then i guess apparently they stick her in a fucking sarcophagus because that's where she's found oh. later <laughs> yeah it's a call back to the yeah. second movie dude oh is it yeah when the when the cat ghoulie stabs uh uh what's her face the one looking for muffy oh have I you seen my little muffy that. yeah who yeah, hasn't oh my god um yeah they put her in they wrap her up in the fucking gauze and put yeah, her in the, yeah, yeah, put her in right. satan's oh, my, den i completely forgot about that yeah. uh you know, not that I always say my favorite kills in a movie, but I think this was probably my favorite in this film. It's most creative. Uh, killing her by pulling her tongue out and spinning it around her. And apparently her tongue works like uh, uh, fruit by the foot. It's about a 200 foot long uh, tongue. So so the next day they're in class and like now now Ragnar is completely unhinged. He's like, he's like evil power. It's the greatest thing in the world. Right. And, and right. they're like, and Aaron's like, well, what about good? That can like overthrow evil. And he's like, nope, never. <laughs> and he also draws it on the chalkboard, like making it like scratchy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Evil and power. Yeah. He's uh, completely fucking gone at this point. He's not even part of the lesson plan. What the fuck is he doing? Uh, so then he gets starts getting into it with the skip. Skip's trying to be good. Right. Skip's you know, trying to skip, study. Skip's and... wearing the nicer clothes too now. He's you know he's not wearing the goofball clothes. The fucking cool guy blazer. Yeah. You know he's got his books. He's taking notes, doing his thing. I'm taking this seriously now, yeah. Mr. Ragnar. He's like, no more pranks, eh? And he's like, I swear to st- stack of Bibles, Mr. Ragnar. <laughs> Meanwhile, then then Jeremy as he's over here in this conversation pulls out his like James Bond fucking briefcase, but. <laughs> it out on the table hits a switch on it and this fucking uh mccarthy's desk just explodes because blaine who's one of jeremy's cronies is like a chemist or some shit oh, yeah right and he's like an explosive expert and the fucking it like blows up it like burns all the way around the desk and the desk falls apart and they're like that's it skip carter you're expelled well, like he has the authority to do that but okay i don't know and he's the, also the dean because he's the yes well okay well just, just so if people for some reason haven't seen the movie he's the, uh, he, he's he the, follows the cord from up to skip's desk oh, yeah. that's planted there to make it look like he did it yeah straight up and he's like what he's the professor of humanitarian humanitarians yeah but he's humanitarian not like yeah but he says that he's the dean or something oh, okay, which basically well. makes me the dean and i'm in charge of all your futures so Skip gets pissed and you can't even blame the guy. He basically is like, you know, this doesn't add up if it's not the gammas and it's not the fucking betas. There's got to be a third party like you guys got to use your brain on this. Yeah. But I guess I'm fucking gone. I'm going to figure this out. So then, you know, the rest of his crew leaves in, you know, solidarity. He's like, oh, why the hell did you guys leave? 
They're like, yeah, we're in this together. He's like, we're all going to get expelled. He's like, you're fucking stupid. Yeah. And then meanwhile, there's Jason Scott Lee still, oh, Mr. Yamabachi. Like on the corner. It's like, <laughs> I guess, you know, the stereo system's pretty fucking expensive. And then I'm thinking about in the 90s how expensive that probably was. So I'm probably pretty upset, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. A couple grand out the, uh, he probably paid for it with his student loans. Oh, pop, oh I yeah, got right? myself as Mr. Yamaguchi. <laughs> $10,000. Just got taken out by a fucking cat ghoulie. So- Rat ghoulie. <laughs> So they're on the str- so now Skip's on the straight and narrow trying to figure out because he's like something's fucking weird here like it's not the gammas it's not the betas who the fuck's fucking us over some something's fishy here right and he has like a falling out with the group because like Mookie's telling him like yeah like what are you even talking about oh you're only doing this for Aaron and all this bullshit and like they get into a fight or whatever and he, he storms pushes off. him yeah he storms off because he gets all pissed off um but Aaron overhears Jeremy. Oh, bragging. Like bragging about fucking setting up Skip. And she pours like hot coffee down his fucking oh, pants. That was it's hilarious. Great. Right, right on the Johnson. Yeah. And he, and then she's like, oh, that's the most action you've gotten in two weeks. Yeah. And his <laughs> The friend, most stimulation, yeah. Yeah, and his friend's like, that's not what he told us. <laughs> so it's like, okay. The fucking Hitler youth, dude. Yeah. So she runs right to Skip. Right to Skip. They fuck. They're fucking with a dust buster dude, or something. Dude, he, he, he sucks to come up with that thing. He's, he keeps that bed clean. <laughs> he's fucking- He's sucking up some of Veronica and Wes's cum, too, that was left in there. He's fucking busting her butt with that, dude. Uh, oh sucking up that fucking sweet cheek. That's how she got her to cream. Oh, maybe. Right on the vagina. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> New, it's, it's could a new be. way to do it. I don't know. It could be. Um, so she's ba- so he's basically like, I got to clear my name, and she tells him that you know Jeremy set him up. So he's like, I right. got to tell Ragnar. He's like, he'll never believe me. She's like, he'll believe me. Well, yeah, what if I tell him? Remember how like Ragnar's been oogling me the whole movie? He'll definitely listen to me. I, yeah, that is a thing that like weird happens a few times. So Blaine goes into this fucking place. That guy who did the the uh, uh, desk explosion. Right, Jeremy's right with hand. a gi- because Jeremy's like, we gotta get that fucking Skip Carter. And Blaine's like, I could build a giant stink bomb and put it in his fucking bed or something. And he's like, yeah, that's a good start. This Let's is, do that. This is like out of Tom and Jerry. <laughs> it's this giant bomb. This is ridiculous. It's not even a stink bomb. It looks like it literal like that he's gonna ex- like blow up the fucking house, the frat house. Uh, and, and then he gets drop dead fretted like the fucking guy in <laughs> Leprechaun 4 oh, w- with a frying pan full of pancakes and eggs. With eggs and bacon on the face. Mm, like it's some friendlies commercial or something. It's fucking great. He got the fucking Denny's Grand Slam, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's getting that fucking friendlies uh, ice cream for dessert <laughs> with the cone, the clown, the clown uh, ice cream. The clown. So what, yeah. It's got a name and I forgot uh, it. Shit. Uh, he's dead either way. I guess it's implied, anyway. it's implied he is. So the bombs, th- like they do that hot potato fucking dolomite bomb thing. Oh, yeah, or Petey ghoulies. Wheatstraw bomb thing. They, they throw it out the window and guess where it lands. Our, our good friend Barkus ends up with it right next to Bonnie. Yeah. And he's like, I, I don't know. It, it's just really funny because he's like, oh, a bomb. A bomb. Yeah, and and it blows up. fucking blows up and his hair's all shot out. It's fucking, he looks like a Tex Avery cartoon. Yeah. So then uh, uh, Aaron and uh, Skip, are, uh, basically, they, they're going to Ragnar's office to be like, hey, it's not our fault. And he's not there. It takes this weird dark turn here because, like, Jeremy, like, wants to kill Skip at this point. Well, also, like, we we we, we forgot the part where McCarthy has said to the ghoulies at this point, oh. I want Skip Carter dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that scene's great. I just want to talk about that real quick. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's wearing the fucking prank crown. Now he's- oh, yeah. He's totally fucking unhinged yeah, at this yeah, point. Oh, he's he's like, lost it. He's got everything he wants, except for one thing. Now, now he's got bloodlust that he needs fulfilling. Because he's like, kill, I want the ghoulies to kill Skip Carter. Oh, he's on the ultimate power trip, It's man. fucking great because like, he's like, he's like, okay, ghoulies. And he's like saying shit and they're like repeating him. And he's like, are you mimicking me? And they're like, are you mimicking me? And he's like, the ghoulies have no dicks. Ragnar has no dick. Ragnar has no dick. It's pretty great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just something that always stuck with me. Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, yeah. So a little later, Skip and Aaron are there, and they find the sarcophagus with yep. with Kerbapo in there and her tongue wrapped around. Now her. it's like a murder mystery, and she's got the crown on her head at this point. Yeah, and they're like, they're like, oh my god, we got to report this murder. And then Jeremy finds him and starts beating the shit out of Skip. Right, and the murder. This is another like situation where people are confused because McCarthy captures Aaron. Mm-hmm. And she's going, you know, because he hears her talking about the murder. And he just assumes it's about Skip. He doesn't realize that she found the dead teacher. So now he now he doesn't have the right information. So now Skip uh, hears Aaron screaming. And Jeremy's like, ah, fucker. 
She's better off. Oh, yeah. She, this bitch ain't worth yeah. it, man. So now Skip goes full Hulk. <laughs> he hulks out and just all of a sudden gets the strength to beat the shit out of all these guys. Don't ever estimate the power of the human will, Sean. <laughs> that Our is friend true. friend Danny Ayo told us this. That is true. The odds. The, yeah. don't, don't forget the odds. Never tell me the odds, kid. Uh, and then he fucking storms off to go save her. And then the movie kind of like... It's weird. It, 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 we're going it to the fucking up, finish line. But it also doesn't... You know, stop. It stops just long enough to get one more weird thing happen. The complexity of Ghoulies Three if that made sense is insane. Like this is so much more than just like a stupid movie. Like all this shit is going on, and it all works together somehow. Eh, well, we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, right. Our final thoughts. So we're, we're almost there. Uh, they're in the library, and and of course, you know, uh, uh, Aaron's strung up. They're getting ready to torture or whatever. Skip comes in to save the day. Fucking knocks out a Kevin McCarthy, shoots fucking goofy glue in oh, the faces yeah. of all these ghoulies. And in the kerfuffle, he ends up getting the comic book. Right. And when he gets the comic, he's able to command the ghoulies and he tells them to kill Ragnar. And Ragnar's like, no, you stupid idiot. You're going to give me your power. Right. Yeah. And then he turns into a, they kill him and they turn into a pile of shit on the floor. They turn into fucking gramps from Terror Vision. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of where the budget maybe, uh. I understand maybe why they didn't show that because of what happens next. They had they had to put the money elsewhere, as we find out. It's pretty great though. But at first, I'm like, man, that was kind of cheap. You didn't actually see him get killed. You just see like his corpse with this like fucking pea soup bubbling out of it. Uh, the roto electrics, the electricity is cool. It though. looks cool. Yeah. It does look cool. But I was kind of hoping for more, and I was like, damn, we didn't get to see him rip to shreds. Well, <laughs> well, okay, give me g Sean. Wait thirty seconds because as Aaron. <laughs> And and Skip are finally like, all right, we're we're out of the fucking danger zone. Out of the wall wait, crashes. Wait, 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 wait. wait, don't forget that Jeremy comes back with like a baseball bat oh, ready to beat right. the shit out of like right, he's yeah. ready to beat Skip's brains in. That's true. What the fuck are you talking about? It's weird. Well, he also is going to frame Skip. He has this whole cockamamie plan where yeah. he's going to blow this thing up and, and he's going to knock Skip out with <laughs> the baseball He's going to try to put him in jail. Right. And then, then now he's like, he's going to kill him. Right. Basically. Uh, and Ragnar kicks the fucking door down. Uh, right. And, and in the commotion, Jeremy gets KO'd yeah. just so that the ending can happen. And yeah, Ragnar now looks like the fucking cover, but oh, it's oh, Kevin man. McCarthy cover. He almost <laughs> looks like Beetlejuice in that one scene towards the end when he's like, he has like the two whackers. Kind of. But like, but like flesh, Kevin, if that makes any sense. Kevin McCarthy comes out with the fucking prank crown on. Right. He's got like demon makeup. He's got this big chest and a fucking <laughs> mouth that moves. Like, and eyes like, like move. uh, what's that character from Captain America from the comic version? Modoc? Yeah, not Modoc. Who's the guy with the TV and the chest? In the movie, they didn't do it like that. Oh, uh, uh, Zola? Yeah, it's like Zola. Yeah. <laughs> kinda. Kinda. But it's a cat ghoul or, or the fish ghoul or one of the ghoulies. It's face. just like a monster, yeah, but yeah. it talks when he talks. Yeah. So, like, the mouth like, moves when he says shit. It's, it, it's it, fucking great. It's bizarre. Um, so they go. Like Krang walking around. So, yeah. So they go. So Ragnar goes after them and uh, he ends up being like. Ah, I am the comic book, and the comic book is me. And they look, oh, at, yeah, the they look comic, at the comic, and there's a fucking the little face is talking. It's great. It's almost like the Necronomicon at the end of the Evil yeah, Dead Two or Dead, Evil Dead One, or like uh, one one of the later uh, Elm Streets for sure. Yeah, like the, the fucking Soul Food Pizza. Oh, yeah. yeah, kinda. And you know, Skip doesn't really know what to do at this point. He's kind of freaked out beyond belief. It all comes back to the toilet, baby. Yes, because we flush the fucking comic book. <laughs> And it like opens this portal that the Buchanan's like, reopened. The, oh yeah, that battle station is fully operational, man. Because yeah. that fucking Buchanan portal opens and sucks Ragnar into the fucking toilet. I I don't know that the Ghoulish Tales uh, comic is one of the MDU Infinity Stones, but it could be like one of Shang Chi's rings scroll. or something like or, that. No, yeah, it's like a, it's like a powerful scroll or it, something. It's some kind of relic that's important because yeah. it combines with the view cannon and it turns into some hellish pole. I think that uh, that portal sends you into the uh, the the room of the, the infinite corridor from oh, the Castlevania anime. It series. could. Uh, you're in there. You just, good luck getting out of there <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, Ragnar gets sucked in this just this giant Ragnar yeah. uh, and sucked in just like West with the fucking legs up by his face. There's a it's point great. where like Kevin McCarthy's like his Dude. arm and his head are like outside of the toilet wriggling around and he gets sucked down. And I will say there are a couple shots where you can tell it's the body double, but yeah, but whatever. It's, yeah, but it's fucking great. And then like a giant flame shoots out yeah. of the toilet. Oh yeah, that was awesome. 
peace and quiet. I don't. It just for like ends. for like a minute. No, no, because like they walk downstairs and Barkus comes flying through the fucking window. Oh my god! With the with his car. With or his whatever. car, like he crashes Bonnie into the fucking frat house and flies through the window. Oh, right, and then just like. He's ranting and raving like, oh, man, who set this bomb here? You know, who, who blew up Bonnie? And he's like, I, I got you, Mr. Mm. Barkus. And he picks up Jeremy and he like Jeremy has like dynamite in his yeah. pocket. He's like, it was all this guy that he was going to plant on Skip. Yeah. So he gets his he fucking get, comeuppance. Right. He gets expelled and potentially in jail and he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He's going to probably have a court case. He's in the FBI is going to probably get involved. Oh, well, they're that's gonna, what you get for Frank Week brought to you by Jeremy going gonna, to jail. They're going to find all that Nazi paraphernalia at his fucking wow, frat house. It's going to be a nasty, nasty day. It's not going to be a nice day for Jeremy. No. <laughs> so then uh, uh, the rest of the, the fucking frat come in. Nobody mentions the giant hole in the wall that Barkus no. put there. You want to know why? Or, or the other hole that, that Ragnar made. They're just like, huh, looks like a shithole like always. Okay. You want to know why? Why? There's a party going on. Yeah. And then we get the fucking ghouly hand coming out of the toilet, crushing the Miller Lite beer can. Oh, yeah. Well, we also get Mookie and, and uh, Skip. Oh, they make reconcile. up. Yeah, they make up. They, and, they bro hug. Yeah. You know. We get that final kiss to close it. Close not the movie Mookie out. and Skip. It's Aaron. Well, and well yeah. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. No, but. but it's not. Maybe they have a threesome after the credits roll. I don't know. Possible. Ronnie's get Ronnie on the horn with the fucking with the with the plunger and all. Yeah, she could probably really suck some long dick now that her, her mouth <laughs> like this, like a cartoon character. It's like fucking ash from yeah, Army I, I, I think she's dead. Um, could be. She might not have survived the ordeal. It's like that fucking lady from uh, Body Melt with the long yes, lips that wiggle yes. around. Yeah. Uh, and then we just uh, yeah, you're right. After that ghouly hand kind of comes out, we go to credits and we get that wonderful. There's a party going on song. Yes. Um. Yeah. So where uh, where are we putting this? In the dumpster. Oh, Absolutely. boy, are you shitting me? N well, no, it's definitely not going in the toilet like <laughs> like shit in this movie. It's not that bad. But I, listen, this movie is it's definitely one of those ones for me that like rides the line. Like it's not quite milk crate on the side of the road. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's not quite that good for me, but it's definitely like, you know, elbow deep. You know, if you want to get it, you, you're going to put your arm through some of those uh, beer cans and some of those, uh, you know, cat ghouly dumps. <laughs> uh, you're going to wipe the kitty litter off your arm. But only, uh, only one. Yeah. You, you, you grab the VHS or the DVD or what have you out of there. Not the Blu-ray, apparently, <laughs> unless you get the German version. <laughs> well, we have the German VHS. Oh, well, we got that at least. That so, uh, you know, the effects are really good in this and the comedy is pretty, pretty on point. I just think it's just such a weird movie that doesn't totally click for me. Okay. Like, I can respect that Beekler was just kind of like, fuck it, it's the third movie. They're letting me do whatever as long as there's a lot of fucking tits in it, I guess. <laughs> and, and this is what he came up with or between him and the writers and, and, and everyone there. I love, uh, how 90, I love how 90% of it is is Veronica's tits. It, I mean, a lot of it is. And, and some other co-eds that don't get names. <laughs> no. Um... I don't know. It's it, it's not that bad. I would rewatch this movie without a doubt. Sure. It's just I'm not a huge Ghoulies fan to begin with. Like I like the monsters. It's kind of like for me this uh, th this series from what I've seen. It, it makes me think of like a, a gnome named Norm. Where like I don't love that movie. Like I love moments in that movie, but overall okay. it's not my favorite. But I like Norm a lot. Sure. So I, I like I really like the Ghoulies, and I like what this movie's trying to do. I just don't think it nails it a hundred percent. And it's like listen, it's, it's an oddball concept strapped to another oddball concept. Like let's not even fucking kid ourselves. This is a niche within a niche. Sure. Uh, so you got a lot of like boxes you got to check and i mean once you start doing like the gross out college comedy and you you, you don't have the balls to go that far with it because it's still at the end of the day is like i know you said it was supposed to be in theaters or potentially could have been in theaters but i don't know how but yeah it, 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 for all intents and purposes a direct to video one of those sure with the little uh rubber monsters on top of that mm -hmm. and i just don't think it kind of you could make an argument this is kind of like a vanilla chocolate uh, 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 cone. Okay. But uh, it's just, it, it's not quite there. Like, the flavor is just a little off. Like, it's not like you're eating, like, shit and cum. But it's <laughs> definitely not vanilla and chocolate. <laughs> that is... <laughs> that's what I... You, you get what no, they're two very drastically I'm different saying, things. It's, it's... Like, where is the middle ground in there? <laughs> shit and cum or ice cream? <laughs> You, anyway, <laughs> uh, it, it's not that bad, but I, I did not love it by any stretch. And uh, I again, that, at the risk of repeating myself, would revisit it, but not in a rush. <laughs> I, it's fine. Um, 
You know it's a shell for me, baby. Oh, yeah, I it's knew it was go- It's right the fuck up there for all the reasons that you just said. It is an insane, oddball mm. fucking movie. Like, not only is it a Ghoulies movie, the third in a Ghoulies franchise. Right, well, there is that. Okay? Um, it's an independent movie, and, like, th- like... But it was also supposed to be released in theaters. Like, what are you talking about? I don't get that. You can't make a movie like this today, right? No. This this is a type. This is a movie that only exists in this small pocket of the late '80s, early '90s, where we were pumping shit out, and it didn't matter. And you, if you had a script and you had 35 millimeter camera and you made a movie, it got made, right? Yeah. So, um, it it works for. I think. People remember this one more than the other two because of how fucking insane it is. And I, and it has it. It has a crazy legacy, mm-hmm. right? Especially in like the the horror community or like the B movie community, or just like, you know, anybody that likes like weird, weirdo oddball movies. Um, it is a sight to fucking behold, man. Again, like we said in the beginning, it's this weird amalgamation of like Revenge of the Nerds, Animal House, like on the set of Animal House with fucking hmm. little rubber monsters and ghoulies and the occult and magic and all kinds of weird shit. And it's this weird like jambalaya of garbage. And it all works really well for me because I like this is so like my brand because like it's little rubber monsters mm. doing funny shit like drinking beer and eating pizza and stuff. And it's also a teen sex comedy. So you get like kind of both of those things going on. Right. Um, or even like Porky's like we said before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just one of those feel good fucking let's hang out and have a six pack or let's hang out and fucking smoke a couple bull boys or J boy. Or It's a great party movie. I uh, yeah, it's a great let's get together and watch some bad movies movie. You know what I mean? It It's, it's not, the pacing is tight. Um, it's weird enough to, to there's something happening like every minute or five minutes or whatever it is, uh, where it's like interesting or stupid or funny. And the fucking ghoulies are, are great. Um, the, the, the three stooges shit that goes on throughout the movie is so fucking funny to me. And when you apply it to, you know, these weird, uh, you know, little rubber monster ghoulie creatures. It's just it, it like ups it like tenfold for me. I love slapstick, which this which this has a lot of and all of the cartoon like gags and shit like that. I don't know. I'm totally into it. It's such a fucking different movie than Ghoulies one. And it's such a different movie than Ghoulies two. And it's such a different movie than Ghoulies four. And I feel like. This will be the one that people will remember, right? We'll we'll keep coming back to like when you say ghoulies, they're gonna keep coming back to three, you know? Ghoulies go to fucking college. Okay, uh, yeah. what are you talking about? It's insane. This is the kind of shit that you look for. That these are the, this is the kind of gems that like I've seen a lot of movies. I haven't seen everything, <laughs> but like yeah. this is the kind of stuff that I look for because it's such a weird out there right, thing. Because it's so weird. Yeah, yeah, but it works. It's not just weird for the sake of it, like these people made this movie like John oh, yeah. made this movie in earnest, <laughs> even though it's a goof. It's still a ton of work to do this fucking yeah, movie. No, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I love it uh, on the shelf for sure, man. Now, now, Ghoulies 4, did you have anything you wanted to talk say about that? I know well, we, you, you were telling me you had something maybe on your mind. So I, so here's Ghoulies 4. Right. And this is a Jim Wynorski joint. Oh, OK. The, the, the MDU icon. Yes. So now. When we get to Ghoulies 4, it is now owned by New Con- what is it, New Concord or New Horizons? That's at the top. Columbia, apparently. No, Columbia and TriStar distributed it. Oh, okay. But I think it's a New Horizons or New Concord uh, produced thing. It's Roger Corman produced. Oh. So it's produced by Roger Corman directly. You go know, from Band to Corman? Yeah, well, Holy that's, shit. that's what's so weird because I'm like, <laughs> how did you let, how did Band let the Ghoulies IP slip yeah. from him? And he's held on the Puppet Master. I guess that I well, guess that's Puppet what happened. Master's like the OG, man. Yeah, but I guess that's what happened, right? Like Full Moon started, and like this was at the ass end of like Empire and Lightning. Right. So I don't really know what happened with that. He had no involvement with this, so maybe it, he already had lost the IP at that point, right? Maybe yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I would love to ask him one day uh, when I when we meet him again. I hope hopefully, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, Chuck Serino's on the score in this, so it sounds like Munchie. <laughs> 
of it, course. It's, it's like, well, Jim's involved, so yeah, why the, not? The fucking uh, score sounds almost exactly like Munchie. And um, what is with the woman on the front? Okay, is that, so is, is that Ugg? Is that a different form of Ugg from Critters too? No, Peter Liapis comes back from this. He plays uh, Jonathan oh, Graves okay. in the first movie. So it's like a direct sequel to the first movie. And what is going on with these ghoulies, man? So, well, let me finish my All right, thought. sorry. So, there's a lot happening so, on so this Peter, So Peter Liapis is, or Liapis, I don't know how to exactly sure, say it. Sure, yeah. Uh, this is his like ex girlfriend who he did like black magic with. Like his actual, oh, or from not the movie, his from not the, his from wife the from the movie, like somebody else entirely. Oh, okay. Like uh, maybe his wife left him or whatever. And he still did black magic and he ended up with her, and then they did crazy black magic together. But okay. then he quit and became a fucking hard boiled cop or whatever. Uh, but she summons these ghoulies like by accident or whatever, and it's like this is the first time we get like little people in ghoulies costumes, and it's okay. these two ghoulies that are just there to call this a ghoulies movie. You know, and again, okay. they do the wisecracking thing and it's all overdubbed. It's nothing. It's nothing fun like Ghoulies 3 where they're like puppets and they're fucking right. around like it's these little guys in uh, suits hmm. and it's all ADR shit. Um, so it's not very good. I didn't used to like this movie. I didn't used to. I didn't used to like this movie. I don't know if I actually like it, um, but it's a weird entry. Again, it's so different. Mm. From all three of these, it has a completely different flavor and the way that it plays out and the way that the Jonathan Graves character is handled is just strange, mm. right? And But he's still into black magic. There's like a whole thing where he has like this doppelganger at the end and all this crazy shit. It's fucking insane. Uh, let us know if you want us to talk about Ghoulies uh, 4 uh, in some capacity because theoretically we've covered all the Ghoulies movies. Yeah, we did well, a show right. with the first one. We yeah. did a watch along of the second one, and we just reviewed the third That's one. That's a good point. So, I mean, maybe a commentary or a future episode. Might as well go for the fucking gusto, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, it's so it's it's just weird because it's like it has nothing to do with Beekler or Band or Vestron or Lightning or anything. It's a Roger. It's now a new Concord joint, and it's a completely different flavor. That that, that the, the behind the scenes on that one alone are, are already got me like interested in it. You know, I'm I'm very curious. I would love to ask uh, Winorski about it. And right. for once, when I say Roger Corman instead of Charles Band or vice versa, I, I won't be totally wrong because I love to mix them up for some reason. Who did you say? Oh, Corman and Band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two I'm, totally I've been getting different a lot guys. better over yeah. the years at it, but I mean, if you've been listening to the show, you know I get them mixed up occasionally. It's very, it's very weird. And that, now that I know their material a little better. <laughs> um, But yeah, so so that's Ghoulies 3, and the, yeah. that was a hell of a time. I'm so glad we talked about it. And again, don't forget... That uh, either it's on Patreon now or it will be soon. We're going to yes. have that Magic Mayhem and Little Rubber Monsters live show in full for you to check out. Five or ten dollar tiers on movie uh, Patreon.com slash Movie Dumpster. Get yourself a fucking uh, Magic Mayhem and Little Rubber, Rubber Monsters t-shirt. Get yourself a sticker. Make yourself a cocktail and hang out and enjoy the show from the comfort of your own home. Make some dumpster juice. Oh, yeah. Dumpster juice. Yes. Or Malcolm's Grave Grog. Or the Thunderbolt. You got options. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, they were all very good. I had one of each at the show. Uh, it was worth it. <laughs> uh, we also have a few other things coming out or have just come out. Uh, earlier this month, we we mentioned it a little early, but we put out our Prey review. Yes, our ripe review. Uh, the prequel to The Predator, the newest sequel. Go see what we thought about that. We liked it. Spoilers. Uh, good. But you want the details? Check out the episode. Uh, we have coming out next uh, very soon. Uh, a, a special episode coming. A very a classic. W one that I've been itching to do for a while. <laughs> may have teased on a different episode at one point. I think it might was the Predator episode or something. One of those episodes. Oh, uh, here it goes. Yeah. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? That's that's the movie Good Burger with Justin Silverman, our good friend. Yeah, that'll be five bucks, right? Yeah. Uh, well, no, actually, this one will be free. This will be on the main feed. Oh, OK. Uh, but there will probably be something for five bucks, <laughs> uh, a commentary track with uh, our good friend Justin. Also, yes. that'll be five. Bucks. Uh, that will be five dollars at patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Check that out. Uh, yes, he's coming back. Finally, he was yes. on the show with us uh, a couple years back for our jingle all the way episode. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to get a, a little uh, prepper, even though it's the summertime, still, a little jumpstart. Yeah. yeah. Check out, you know, want to learn a little bit about Justin if you're not familiar with them. Uh, you know, Check that one out. We talk about Phil Hartman spying on uh, uh, Arnold's wife. He's making videotapes. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's uh, 
It's not Christmas, but I go check it out. <laughs> it's a funny one, yeah. right? And uh, we're doing Good Burger, and I yes. couldn't be more excited. We're doing Good Burger. We're gonna have Justin Silverman here yeah. in the flesh. It's gonna be great. Um, we're gonna hang out and talk and bullshit and do some good stuff. Uh, we also will be bringing back our live shows. Not well, not not our live in person, but our live shows. Uh, that we we, we used to do our monthly wrap month. ups. Yeah, we are gonna actually go back to just put these on YouTube yes. instead of doing Twitch for these and see how that goes. We were doing them on YouTube originally. When we first started doing the the, the live uh, well, uh, wrap ups, and then we switched to Twitch, but we're gonna switch back and s- we're jumping all over the place. But we think YouTube <laughs> might work a little better for these. In the beginning, we broadcast everywhere because we weren't yes. sure where the audience was at. But now that we've had time to uh, kind of experience that and hang out with you guys and kind of figure out where everything lands, we thought the best move would to be to from Twitch to YouTube because mm-hmm. everybody's there. All of our subscribers are there, and everybody uh, who joins us for the shows yeah uh you know for the for the mainline shows or the ripe reviews of the talks or everything for the live um uh viewings yeah. when we release the episodes now we'll be doing our live wrap-up show directly on youtube exactly. so you can chat live with us there you don't have to go to twitch you can just hang out on youtube you'll get the fucking notification and everything um and we'll see how it goes yeah. and if you've never checked out our live shows we got a bunch on the uh, feed if you want to go back yeah. and, and see what it's all about but basically it's just BSing with you guys, the dumpster dwellers. We have a chat going. We answer questions. We just talk movies, talk some of the stuff we've covered, and just kind of hang out, drink some beers, it's just talk a, some shit. You it's, know, it's a big open hang session. All are welcome. Uh, ask us whatever you want. Um, and uh, we just like to we just like to get together and hang out with you guys. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. Always is. Yes, and uh, I think that's about it, Joe. I think that's about it. Uh, but you know, it, there's another party going on somewhere else, so we're gonna have to hit it. Oh, okay, yeah. We get we get. some like it hot, some like to dance, or whatever the fuck that is. Anyway, I was gonna dance, but you stopped one second before I did, and the moment has passed. Yeah, we'll do it again later. So that's it. That's Ghoulies Three: Ghoulies Go to College from 1990, directed by John Carl Beekler. I'm Joe Lascola, and I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. 